Okay, I'm going to try and do Schrodinger as quick as I can. So Schrodinger said that uh, the um, it's fantastic stuff. This that the uh, the uh, particles can be described by a wave function, uh, and uh, he thought the wave function was a physical reality. So particles were waves, uh, and more like really fast modes of vibration of waves. Whereas someone called Max Born came along later and said that's not actually a reality. It's more about probability. But for all intents and purposes, what do you guys need to know? Uh, certain things. The wave function described um, the uh, particles, uh, and and uh, most importantly, that the square of the wave function, um, as a function of 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 position in space, would tell us the place a particle is most likely to be. So, for example, if I took um, the square of a wave function that described the particle according to Schrödinger, squared it and got something like this, and this would be position across here. Uh, this could be uh, position in, in an atom, for example. Then I would know the particle is most likely to be here, because that's the highest amplitude. Uh, the particle could be anywhere in this region, but it's most likely to be here, because that's where the amplitude is highest. Uh, and that's what the wave function tells us. Um, and that's developed over time. Schrodinger, remember, thought this is a physical reality, but it's not so easy as that, as we've seen in some of the videos that we've been watching. Now, um, Schrodinger's wave function uh, was a direct result of de Broglie's hypothesis from um, the idea that uh, particles can have an associated wavelength. And obviously, we've seen that the classical physicists were very happy with this as um, a, an explanation of particles in the atom. Now, one problem was that this model did not um, did not account for the quantum jumps that we see uh, electrons do between um, energy levels that um, that Bohr postulated were just would would ju was just a rule that they weren't allowed to exist in between. So uh, Schrödinger um, thought that you can explain this using his wave function model by by make uh, by using something called the electron in a box model. So we're going to talk about the electron in a box, okay? And you need to remember your standing waves. Now he said that if the electron in a box was described by a wave function, that wave function had an associated wavelength, and then you could account for the allowed or quantized energy levels by thinking of the the particle behaving like a standing wave in the atom. Um, if the particle or electron was in the ground state, it was um, oscillating in its fundamental, um, and then the first excited, um, sorry, the second excited or first excited state would be uh, the next mode of vibration, and then the next energy level would be the next mode of vibration, much like we've seen in standing waves. Now, what he then did was he derived an equation for the kinetic energy of uh, the electrons in this, uh, using this idea of um, standing waves, and it worked really, really well. And what I'm going to do is derive that equation and just watch this video back again s to see how it's done. So let's say these are the nth energy levels, and this is the first, second, and third. Um, the electron in a box states that different modes of vibration account for the different energy levels. Now, this bottom one is the fundamental, and it's lambda over 2 um, in wavelength. The second one is just lambda, as you can see, and the third one is 3 lambda over 2. Exactly the same um, science as we did with standing waves. Um, now, the electron here is confined within the atom, uh, and let's say it's confined within a space of L, and we're going to call that the length of the box, which in reality is a property of the atom itself. Um, and um, you can hopefully see that, um, and I'm going to write this in a different colour, um, so we can come back to it in a second. Hopefully you can see that L is equal to N lambda over 2. And rearranging that, I get that lambda is equal to 2L all over N. Um, now, EK um, is given by uh, that equation that we're never going to forget, which is um, P squared all over 2M. Um, and that uh, lambda is equal to H over P because it's an associated wavelength to Broglie. Um, that means that P squared will be equal to H squared all over lambda squared. Um, substituting in for p squared, I'll get that ek is equal to h squared all over 2m lambda squared. And uh, from this equation, I can see that lambda squared is equal to 4l squared all over n squared. Substituting in, I get ek is equal to, and you can finish it off yourselves.